This is Professor Michael Chapman. I'm one of the most experienced IVF doctors in Australia. I believe that an important part that I can contribute is to educate patients in relation to fertility, infertility and all that that involves. These series of podcasts help to educate you. I hope they are helpful to you. If you wish to know more, however, I'm more than happy to have you contact me via email, which is profmchapman at gmail.com or make an appointment to see me on 9138 One of the questions that I saw last week is a question about fresh or frozen transfers. So when we do an IVF cycle, when we get to the stage of a, an embryo to transfer, and the question is, should we be freezing or should we not? There are clinics in Australia and some overseas where they freeze all embryos they don't do any fresh transfers whatsoever and their results are very good so it is a possibility to do that the downside of it is that you're going to waste another three or four weeks before you have that embryo transferred so whereas a fresh cycle you're putting it back straight away you're going to have to wait for a period and then wait for ovulation in the next cycle before we put that uh, embryo back large studies have shown no difference in pregnancy rates between fresh and frozen transfers. In that sense, it doesn't really matter. Argument as to why should a frozen cycle do as well as a fresh goes something like this. When we stimulate you for an IVF cycle, the lining of the womb is actually quite abnormal because of the very abnormal high estrogen levels that you have when we stimulate your cycle. Thick endometrium, thickened endometrium, perhaps is not as receptive as a normal menstrual endometrium, normal cycle endometrium. So in a frozen cycle, we've got the endometrium that would normally see a pregnancy coming, seeing an an embryo arrive in the uterus and implantation occurring. Against that is that fresh embryos obviously um, are fresh (laughs) and uh, perhaps they're of higher quality than when we freeze them and then thaw them again. Certainly a decade ago when we used a technique called slow freezing, the success of frozen embryos was something like 30% less than a fresh cycle. What's happened in the last five to 10 years is the development of a technique called vitrification or fast freezing. And the results from that are now very obvious. There is no difference between fresh or frozen. Now there might be particular reasons why your specialist wants to freeze the embryos. When you overreact to the drugs that you produce 20, 30 eggs and have very high estrogen levels, there's a risk of hyperstimulation. We can reduce that risk uh, of you ending up in hospital by not putting an embryo back and freezing all those embryos. So that's one reason. The second reason is that in some women, particularly older women, as we get towards the day of um, egg collection, for reasons we don't totally understand, progesterone starts to be produced as well as estrogen. And that progesterone has an impact on the lining of the womb. It brings forward the maturation of the lining of the womb. So when it comes time to put an embryo back, they're out of sync. Being out of sync means you won't get pregnant. Well, that's not quite true, but it reduces the pregnancy rates by about 50%. So if your doctor finds that your progesterone level is now Uh, four or five instead of one on the day of the trigger, uh, he will suggest, most likely suggest, not putting a fresh embryo back. Then uh, the other reason, and the last one really, is that you want to genetically test your embryos. And uh, in Australia, when we test embryos, we biopsy the embryos on day five and then have to freeze the embryos because the results uh, take a, a few days to get back. And there are some countries around the world where they do it overnight and the scientists work uh, <laughs> shift work and uh, can get a result the next day. But and that's a rush and, and we believe it's a um, better standard. Given that frozen embryos have the same chance of success as fresh, uh, we believe that's the best way to go. There are numbers of reasons why we freeze embryos and uh, your, your clinician will take you down that track. But I think the most important thing is to be reassured that if you do get frozen embryos, um, they will do just as well 
as a fresh embryo. And don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu. (laughs) 